Hello geographers, this is Mason Patterson. I am doing a project on behalf of the Geography 4313 Environmental Management class for Texas State University. This is a portion of my capstone in which I will be identifying urban heat islands in ArcGIS Pro using Landsat 8 imagery. This portion of my capstone is to serve as a public tutorial for construction of the maps I will be using in my written analysis of the urban heat island effect in San Antonio across the past 20 years. To start off, I would like to pay credits to the following people, Jeff Opong, Oro GIS, and GIS and RS Solution. Uh, these were either YouTube channels, people, or entities that aided in the tutorial that is in front of you today. A majority of the credit goes to Jeff as well, though, because most of his calculations were the ones that I will be using for the analysis portion of the urban heat island effect. Moving on to the first steps and the setup of the urban heat island analysis. Our first steps are slightly complicated as they do involve data gathering. However, please do not be daunted by the task of doing so. Uh, we will first go to earthexplorer.usgs.gov. This is the main source of our information and this is how you will have access to the Landsat 8 imagery data that we are using today. To have access to this data requires a registered USGS account. This is an important caveat. Moving to the earthexplorer.usgs website, we start at the enter search criteria page and begin by entering in our feature name, which is whatever you desire it to be. For the example's sake today, we will be using Houston. And there are multiple Houstons within the world, so specifying which state helps with our coordinate gathering. Houston pops up, click place name, and the location data pops up for Houston. Another important note to do is the date range. I already have it set here for just the month of January. Whenever you're doing these studies, um, you're able to use whatever month you deem fit. Moving from search criteria to data sets, we go to the data set screen, which has a large amount of data, but we are only concerned with the Landsat data. The collection we are also concerned with is going to be level two and not level one. I found out that level two is atmospherically corrected data, whereas level one contains a digital mental number, which will not help in our data collection purposes. Going to want to check Landsat 8 through 9 as that is the band data that we want to use and hit additional criteria. Additional criteria isn't needed, however, this is just something that you're able to look at if need be. Results pops up. And what you're going to want to do next is show footprint for the see I've popped up all four of the bands here and since my study area is Houston I want to finalize on one footprint that encompasses at least a majority of Houston looks like it's gonna be this one next up we are going to hit the download options button product options add all to bulk is important here close close go to your item basket and starting the order from here will take you to a system that is relatively self-explanatory on how to actually check out and get everything accomplished um, 
once you have a registered USGS account, it has an email address attached to it, which will receive the data whenever you query for the download. Now that you have your data and are ready to begin, you can start by opening ArcGIS Pro. Once you start ArcGIS Pro, begin by clicking New Project and Map and creating a new project. Once your map loads, begin by going to Map, Add Data, Add Data to the Map and swing by wherever you extracted your data to. I extracted mine to my downloads folder. Whenever you're in your folder, select band four and band five and add them to the map. Once these are both added, make sure to rename these to shorter file names for ease of use. Once these are added, we can start with our calculations. So we're going to go to geoprocessing and find the roster calculator spatial analyst. With that open, we're now going to begin our calculations. Float. And to insert these values into the equation bar, you can just double tap them. Excuse me. Please make sure to always check your parentheses and your quotations and make sure you're not doubled up or missing any at any point. Once you have your equation set, changing your output roster to an easy to understand name, which will be NDVI or normalized difference vegetation index, which we are calculating. Once you have the formula in and you have your output roster set, click run. Once that's finished running, we can add the rest of our data from the same source that we gathered previously. We are going for band 10 now though. Once you've added band 10 to the mix, you're going to want to do the same thing with the file name, changing it to a smaller, more manageable name. Once that's done, we're going to do a top of atmosphere calculation. Going back to your roster calculator, you're going to type 0 0.000. Our band 10 plus 0.1. Once you have that set, change your output roster to TOA. Calculation is complete. We're now going to calculate brightness temperature from our TOA. This formula is as follows. Once you have your formula set, you're going to change your output roster once again to BT or brightness temperature. Next is going to be the most hands-on calculation of the set. We are going to be calculating the proportional vegetation index. To calculate that, the formula is going to be square NDVI and then we're going to have to go to our contents panel. Go to the NDVI layer, right click, properties, source, statistics, and your minimum and maximum will both be listed here. These are the numbers that you're going to be using for the formula. I have them copied in a separate document. 
and I will be pasting them. This value I'm now pasting is the maximum. The formula is as it appears here. Once you have it finished, put in your output roster as PVI and run. Once you're finished with that, you're gonna to wanna to create an error correction layer by typing this formula. And making this your error correction layer. Next is making the last layer, which is our land surface temperature layer. This is gonna be a culmination of our calculations. Once you have that put in, your output is going to be LST or land surface temperature. Your map is now almost completed. You have a layer consisting of the land surface temperatures in front of you. Once you uncheck visibility for everything and change the symbology for this layer to be easily understood, you can tell where the urban heat island is. We're gonna zoom in real quick and take this layer away just to display. This is indeed Houston. Now that we have our urban heat island identified, we're going to create data from this set using a stack profile. First up, we're gonna to wanna to create a new shape file, which is found by going to the catalog pane, going to folders, and wherever your current project is saved, this is where it will pop up. You're gonna to wanna to right click this, go new, shapefile, create a feature class. Feature class location stays the same. Feature class name can be the graph. Geometry truck is going to change to polyline. The coordinate system is going to match whatever previous layers you have, and it'll be listed conveniently here. Match those up. Once this is all put in, run. You've now created a feature layer, and now I'll need to specify where this feature layer is going to go by going to Edit, Create, clicking on the symbol, adding a line, going to your map and drawing a line through whatever designated area you deem fit. This is about where the middle of the urban heat island appears, so I'm going to draw a line straight through. Double tap at the end to finish your line off. Save. Save all edits. Clear to deselect. We'll do a little bit of symbology to clean it up and make it more visible. Now that we have that set, we're going to use Stack Profile now. Stack Profile is found in Geoprocessing. Our input line feature is going to be the graph. Profile targets are going to be land surface temperature. And our output table is going to be the graph underscore stack profile. We'll just name it the graph table. That is now done. We'll exit this create features area. Stack profile is now complete. Our standalone table appears in the contents tab here. Right click, open. We're going to right click first Z, statistics. And we now have statistics for our charted area. Here's our graph. 
here is various statistics concerning the outlined area in the graph line. And now you are officially done. The last steps involve beautification, which are optional steps, obviously, but I would like to do them just to show. This varies from location to location and accessibility to data. Because this is a Texas location, I do have access to the city boundaries. And I'm going to add that data by going to Map, Add Data, and going to whichever folder I had saved my city boundaries shapefile under. Adding that, changing the symbology for appearance. We'll do the black outline. And now you can clearly see the outline of Houston and the outline basically of your urban heat island. Congratulations, you have finished a urban heat island map and are now able to process the data from your Landsat 8 imagery. Thank you. Many of the links used in this video, along with the formulas used in this video, will be attached within the description. Thank you for watching the video. My accompanying paper to this tutorial will be coming out soon.